I am Sandra Fellers, and if this is your first time watching me, I'd like to first welcome you. I am so happy you're here. Um, I am going to be doing a live craft today, a DIY craft with you that I think you will enjoy. And um, I also have a free group called the Hen House Crafting Club. Um, which I would love for you to join. Um, that's a place where I like to share crafts and things that I'm working on. And um, it's also a place where you and everyone else in there can share what they're working on so that we can share um, ideas and inspiration um, on the latest and greatest um, projects that we are working on. So I'd love to have you in there. Just uh, let me know in the comments below and I will get you a link so that you can get in there lickety split. So, okay, so if you missed my live that I did a little bit earlier today, I talked about um, a lot of the new products that are now available on my website. Um, a ton of um, spring designs have come out. Um, the website has been revamped, so it is easier to navigate, it has lots of uh, pretty pictures and videos and things like that um, that I would love for you to go and check out. Um, so the new brochure is out with all the new fun spring ideas. Has a super cute banner on the front that is done with chalk couture and some of the other things. Um, so anyway, in my video, I um, highlighted some of the new products um, that I just got in the mail. It was super fun. So um, go on over there and check that out if you missed it as soon as this one is done. Um, and you can see um, more of those products. Okay, so for today's craft, I am going to be using one that I am very, very excited about. Um, if you have been on the fence about possibly joining um, Club Couture, which is like um, a subscription box, I'm sure you've seen like the food ones and the clothes ones and all that where you can um, get a monthly subs subscription box mailed to you. Well, this one is a crafting subscription box. And um, the transfer this month is out of this world. It is welcome to our home. I love, 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 love this because um, this one is um, something that you can use year round. I mean, you could put it on pillows or boards or signs or whatever, and you can have it up in your house year round. So you don't have to worry about, oh, well, I can only use that one for Christmas and I can only use that one for Valentine's Day. This is a year round one. And there are so many different ways that you can use this. In fact, I'm gonna show you two ways tonight. So we're gonna do two crafts. Hopefully um, this video won't get too long with those crafts. I'll try to make it as quick as possible so that we can get through both of those. Um, but I wanted to show you the versatility of this transfer, and I have tons of other ideas floating around in my head on what we could do with this transfer to change it up and make it different all by using one single transfer. So the only way you can get this transfer is by joining Club Couture. It is not available to purchase on its own. You have to join the club. Um, so you need to get on in there and get in that club so that you can get this and all of the other awesome transfers that come out each month. Um, if you need to know how to um, get in the club, let me know. I will get you a link so that we can get you in there. But for now, let's check out some fun projects using this transfer. I'm going to turn my camera down um, so that you can see what I've got going on. But first, um, let me show you a couple of things. So, um, you know, one thing I can do is put the transfer pretty much as is on a board, just like that. And it'd be super cute to do that. And we're going to do it. And I'm going to show you um, how cute it can be on just, just exactly the way it is on the transfer. But other things that you could do is make a banner. So I bought this pre-made banner at Hobby Lobby. It was in the paper section, like the scrapbooking section, and it was $4.99, and I used the, um, you know, Hobby Lobby always has the 40% um, off coupon on their website, so I used the 40% off coupon on it, so that's not too bad. It says that there are 12 pennants, so we won't need that many, so we'll have some extras on the side, which is perfectly fine, 
And um, so I'm going to show you how we can make a home pennant that can be left up year round in your house and will be super duper cute. So another option that I found was at the dollar store. They had this banner and it has letters on it that say best day ever. I found this at the Dollar Tree and it says best day ever and it comes with a little ribbon and these little cardboard banners. Well, we can't chalk over this with our home design, but we can totally flip it over and chalk on the other side. So that'd be even a less expensive um, idea than the one I got at Hobby Lobby. So, um, you know, either way, and it's a little bit different flag design. So depending on what you prefer or what'll work for your space, that's two banner options for you right there and you don't have to worry about cutting them out for yourself. So um, we're gonna do a board and a banner. And um, so let's get started. I think we'll start with the banner first. And I'm gonna do the pennant banner. Banner, can't talk right. That's the triangle shaped ones. So let me open this baby up. So these also are cardboard. Um, they're not made out of fabric or anything. I did also look at some uh, burlap banners, which were super cute. I just couldn't decide if um, if my design was gonna look good, look as good on the burlap as it does this plain black surface. So these are really nice, and they're already strong, so you don't have to worry about that. You have your string to hang it up with. Just need to find our middle piece. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so there's six on each side. And I'm gonna turn this down so you can see exactly what I'm working on. So this is our transfer. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. So are you guys decorating for spring yet? I noticed in Hobby Lobby they have all of the, not only the Valentine stuff, but they already have all of their Easter stuff out, um, which I really, really love decorating for Easter, um, probably just as much as I love decorating for Christmas. So I'm gonna cut along the cut lines here and here. You could cut each letter out individually, but I'm gonna leave it together like that. Um, just because if I want to put it on my square or rectangular board, I won't have to worry about the spacing because it's already spaced out properly for me. So I'm gonna keep it like that to hold um, the spacing as is. And then I'm just gonna cut out these pieces. So it has the words, Welcome to our on here, and then home on here, and then this is some little berries that you could use to put on the wreath. So, we got that. All right, so we have four letters. So we're gonna be off-centered a little bit. One, two, three, four. And then that leaves one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that would be centered. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So we're going to start here with our H. I have to put something on that so it'll quit sliding. There we go. We'll just put it further down on the desk. This one is going to be our H. Triple countant because I want to make sure that it's centered on my board. Okay, so I am going to remove this from the backer paper 
being careful not to allow it to stick to itself. And then I'm not sure how it's going to do on this cardboard. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put it on my fuzzing cloth to get some fuzz on it so that it's not too sticky. Because if it's too sticky, I'm afraid it might lift up some of the paper on the pennant. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and fuzz it just to be safe. On a new transfer, it's usually a pretty good idea to fuzz it anyway because they're super sticky when you first get them. All right, let's try that. Okay, so now I am going to just try to line up my H, try and figure out where I want it to be on my flag. Thinking something like that needs to move over a little bit though. Cross your fingers. Oh, it's still super sticky. I'm going to fuzz it a little bit more. Bear with me. This is going to be a little bit of trial and error. But look at it this way. I can make the mistakes while I'm right here live in front of all of you so that you'll know exactly how to do it when you get ready to do it. Maybe I should have done the board first to get some of the sticky off of this. Live and learn is all I can say. Okay, let's try this again. I wish y'all could see my face. I'm over here biting on my lip and having the hardest time lining this up. Since the pennant is not square, I was having a hard time telling how quickly it narrowed down to make sure I had an even amount on either side here. I hope that's pretty good. I'm not going to press down too hard on this because it is still super sticky and sticking pretty hard to my paper. So I'm just going to make sure that the areas around my screen are stuck down. And I'm just going to get a little plastic stir stick to make sure that my chalk paste is stirred nicely. Um, you wanna make sure that it is a yogurt-like consistency so that it'll go on nice and smooth. And um, you'll wanna make sure that the pigments are all mixed evenly as well. Okay, this is mixing up pretty nicely. All right, so next I need to grab a squeegee. Make sure my hands are clean because I don't want to get it all over my banner. So this is the small squeegee and I'm just going to load up some of my white chalk paste on here. And I'm going to gently glide it over the H, trying not to get um, the wreath so that I don't mess up over there. 
and then I'll come back, stand up my squeegee more at a 90 degree angle and glide it across again so that I can remove the excess paste. Okay, I'm gonna put the excess back in the jar so that we're not wasting it. And now I'm gonna stand it up a little bit and glide it over the top. Okay, like that. That looks good. Okay, cross your fingers, people. Wish me some luck. Well, let's pull it this way so you can see the reveal better. Oh, it's so sticky. Ta-da! There we go. We have a nice little H. So now I need to slide it over while that dries and work on my wreath. Let's try to get these the same distance. Okay. I think that will be nice. All right, so now with the white chalk paste again, we're going to glide it over. Trying to only get the wreath. Now I'm removing the excess. Okay. All right. Got a little bit on my finger. Just wipe it off. So Get it everywhere and cross your fingers and get this sticky thing off. Ah, oh, there we go. I think I pulled off a little bit right there. This paper project might not have been the best one to do first. Okay, so we have a wreath and we're going to move it over to do the elm. Try to line it up. So I'm using the lines on my mat to help me make sure that it's in line with this one. If you're wondering what kind of craziness I have going on here. So this mat is available on my website as well. It's a self-healing mat and it is an excellent addition to your workspace. Um, I use it like that a lot for lining things up, um, for measuring things. I don't know if you can see on the side, but it has numbers, so it has inches for you to measure. Um, and it's self-healing, so if you get some little marks on there or whatever, they should heal right up. So it is a pretty good item to have on your crafting space. All right, so now let's get the excess off of our elm. I started with the banner first because I wanted to show you something 
a little bit out of the norm. Because you can um, go on the website and you can see an example of how it's done on the transfer. So I wanted to give you something a little bit different. There, now we have the M. Right, now we're going to slide it down one more time. Okay, get these lined up. Pretty good. Okay, let's do that up there. All right, so our last letter, and then we'll go and add some embellishments. Um, I have some little fun, um, I guess it's it's not ribbon. I call them little dingleberries. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know that that's the official name for it. I'll look at the container here in just a second and see, and show you what it says. That I thought they would be super fun to add to our banner. Okay, so now I need to go back and remove the excess on the E. Awesome. Okay, one last time we got to carefully get this off of this paper. There. Got a nice little E. Now I'm going to put this in a pan of water until I'm ready to wash it off. First, we're going to put some little embellishments on our banner here. Okay. Whew, this is a little bit trickier than I thought it was going to be. But I'm glad you guys are hanging in there with me. Alright, so this is the stuff that I was talking about. What do you call this stuff? See what it says on here. Well, three yards of trim. I don't remember where I got them, but they were a dollar each. They were in my ribbon stash. Pink palms and white palms. So they're little tiny pom poms, I guess. Doesn't say dingleberry on here anywhere, but that's what I always call them. <laughs> Am I the only one? Um, so let's open these up and show you what this would look like. Maybe you can help me decide if we want to use one or both. You could... Um, I was thinking that what I was looking for was some um, burlap ribbon and I had lots of burlap ribbon but it was all like kind of too wide for what I wanted. Um, I wanted something, I don't know, like a half to three quarters of an inch and everything I had was bigger than that. So I thought, well, what about these little pom-poms? See if I can find the end of it. 
How cute would that be? Oh, you can't see that. Let me slide this down a little bit so you can see. So I thought we could hot glue this along the top edge. What do you think? Do you like the white or the pink? Do you like the pop of color with the pink or do you like it all black and white? Or you could possibly do this. That'd be a lot of finger burning probably trying to do two layers. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. I'm gonna plug in my glue gun to get it heated up. Now you could use other types of glue as well. Um, one that I like to use a lot is this E6000. This is a tiny little tube, but they have much bigger tubes of it. Um, you can find at the craft store. Um, you could use that as well. Um, but today we are gonna use the hot glue gun. So let me just get this plugged in so that it can heat up while we're waiting to see what you guys prefer, the pink or the white. Another fun thing um, that I've been seeing a lot of that I thought would be cute is, um, I can't think of what they're called right now. I think they're rag banners, I think is what they're called, where they um, rip fabric into little like one inch strips and then they tie them on the banner and then you have like just these little things hanging down in between or, or sometimes they have just the rag on there but i thought that would be kind of fun to put like the rag banner pieces in between each one of the flags so that would be kind of cute where you just have it hanging down and you could have several different colors of ribbon or whatever um but again, I just, I don't know, in my stash, I wasn't finding what I wanted. So we're gonna go with these pom-poms. And I'm not seeing any preferences. So I am really thinking that I like this little pop of pink on here. So I think that's what we're gonna go with. So let me move this other banner out of the way. Slide this baby back over to the H where we started. Okay. Slide these down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so now I am gonna just See how long I need this to be and trim it down. And then I don't want to use my fingers to push it down because the glue is going to be hot. So I'm just going to use this little tool that I have handy. Um, if any glue gets on it, it won't hurt anything. It'll just peel right off. So this is one of my Cricut tools that I use for um, weeding or, or pulling out the little excess pieces out of, out of there. So let's see if we have any hot glue coming out of this thing yet. Yep. It is. And it's stringy. I didn't think about that. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of glue along the top edge and you don't even have to have the whole line in there. You just need to get some dots of glue in there to hold that baby down. So let's try not to push the trigger too much because I want to... Uh, I don't need very much for these little pom-poms. Okay, I think my glue dried. 
dried too fast. Tell you what, sometimes when you're live, everything goes wrong. But now you guys know that even though I'm crafting all the time with this stuff, I have fails too. It doesn't always work exactly right for me. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, I'm just gonna put a little dot right here. And put this little bad boy on here. Now, add a little bit more. Okay, so what are you guys thinking about this project so far? Yes, no, maybe. Is this something that you would make? In case you guys haven't noticed, I'm obsessed with pink. And my glue gun is pink. Gosh, all these strings are going to drive me insane. Get one little string and it won't let go of my finger. Okay, here we go. I did pretty good without... Burning my finger. I'm impressed. All right, what do you think about the pom poms? Can you see them okay? I like them. next one going. Now I'm just following right along the edge of um, the ribbon that connects all of the banners. And so that's helping me keep a nice straight line. I might have cut this one just one little ball pom pom too long. I'm gonna have to cut that last one off. I don't know what kind of glue I got this time, but I must have gotten the stringiest glue there is. I don't recall having this much trouble with my glue gun before or my glue. Okay, so let's clip this one off. looking cute. Bring it down so we can work on the next two.
Oh, I guess I better trim it first. Getting carried away here. Let's measure it out. Okay, here we go. We're getting there. Hang in there with me. We're almost finished with these little pom poms. I've been seeing a lot of pom poms around lately. Usually bigger than these, but I've been seeing a lot of them. Okay, there we go. There's the M. Get my little hot glue strings off. Have y'all ever had this much trouble with your hot glue being this stringy? Did I buy the wrong stuff? Do you have one that you prefer that's not as stringy? If you do, let me know so I can try it out. Because this is just annoying. Okay, let's move that out of the way. All right, we're getting there, folks. Last one. Perfect. I'll cut this last one off because I think it's just a little bit longer than I wanted. Okay, there we go. Perfect. All right, let's move this glue gun out of the way. And I'll try to show you what we have so far. Okay, so here's what we have so far. Scoot back so you can see it. Look at that. How cute is that? Super easy. We added the little pom pom details. With our letters, we use the wreath for the O. Super cute. There we go. And I know it's backwards for you guys. It's because I have my um, camera in selfie mode so that I can see you guys if you're asking questions or leaving comments. Um, I can see it. And if I turn my camera around, because I'm using my phone to record, um, then I can't see what you guys are saying. So I will take some pictures of this um, and uh, post it tomorrow um, hanging or displayed in my house so that you can see the whole thing. And let's, um, let's get this transfer cleaned up so that we can do one final project using um, the chalkboard. So 
I made a mess with this. I got paper all over the back of it. And I probably won't be able to get all of that off here at my desk, but what I will do is um, when I'm finished with my live video, I will take it over to um, the sink and um, use my board eraser. And a board eraser, you can purchase them on my website and they're round, um, like a white foam eraser and it makes it super duper easy um, for cleaning up your boards. Um, I cleaned this one right before I started this live video. It had another design on there and you can see you can't, you don't see the um, chalk film or, um, you know, any residue from the design that was there before. And all I used was water in that little um, board eraser. It makes cleanup super duper easy. So, because we're only using um, chalk, all it takes is water to clean these transfers with. Um, but since I am not at a sink, um, we're going to use some uh, Clorox or disinfecting wipes. Um, it just makes for easy cleanup when I don't have a sink available. Hey Sherry, glad you joined us. So, just some disinfecting wipes. I'll turn this down so that you can see um, how it works. All right. There we go. So, there's our white chalk paste all over it. And I'm just going to use a little wipey and rub over it. And I don't have to worry about it getting on my desk or my fingers or anything because it's chalk. It just washes off with water, so there's no issues with that. I'll turn it over and see the black that I pulled paper up. It's kind of a bummer, but I'll get that cleaned up. No worries. It should not hinder our project that we're working on now, but I just want to get it um, cleaned up and dried so that we can put it on the chalkboard and make our next project. So when these transfers are wet, um, they're not sticky. So if, you, um, if you're using one for the first time and you think, oh no, I just ruined it, it's not sticky, not to worry. Um, they will get sticky again as soon as they start to dry. So you want to uh, make sure that when you're cleaning them and all, that you lay them out flat with the sticky side up. Because if you lay them down with the sticky side down, you are going to have a heck of a time um, getting them off of the countertop or table or whatever you stuck them to. Okay, I think I pretty much got this, and I'm just going to go over it real quick again to make sure that it's clean. Okay, then I'm gonna use my fuzzing cloth to dry it off and make sure it's got some fuzz on it as well. So just get some of the moisture off of it so that the stickiness will start coming back and it'll stick nicely to my board. That's perfect. Okay, hopefully that will be good enough um, with all of that paper that I got on there. But the screen looks clear, so I think it's going to be fine. So this is, move this aside, this board I believe is a 9 by 12. Let's see here. 
This is our Couture Gallery Aiden board. It's A-I-D-E-N, Aiden board, and it is nine by 12 inches. And um, it has a white distressed frame, so you can see the little imperfections that I love. Um, so that's what we're using today, the Aiden board. And the welcome to our home transfer. So let me see which side is the top. The side is the top so we're gonna put the welcome to our and then put the sticky side down home will be down here so let's see if we can get this laid out a little bit make sure I have enough room for everything oh, I guess it would help if I turned it the right direction This way. All right. Give me that. What do you guys think? Does that look pretty centered? This way, I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this part down. I don't have to worry about the whole transfer being stuck down, but I do want it to be stuck around the screened areas so that we can get a nice crisp design. So if there's any air bubbles, you want to push those out. Okay. Let's look at the air bubble right there. Okay. Looking good. Now I'm going to remove this one from the backer paper. We did not use this one for our pennants or our banner that we were working on earlier. So it's still on the backer paper. And I'm going to get some fuzz on it. Since we have not used it yet, it's super duper sticky. So I'm just going to put it on the fuzzing cloth and then lift it up a couple of times. And you're literally just pulling up fuzz from the fuzzing cloth onto the sticky part of the transfer. So they can be super sticky and by fuzzing it, you can help protect your transfer from uh, tearing or stretching and ruining it because you wanna be able to use these over and over again and not have to buy a new one. Okay, so we did that several times. Now we just need to place this up above, space it out a little bit, something like that. I love this script, this is really pretty. All right, so I'm gonna stir up my white paste again. So I left it sitting out. It, it's getting a little bit dry, but it's stirring up nicely. You want it to be a yogurt-like consistency. And if it's too thick, you can add just a little squirt of um, distilled water and then just stir it up really, really good and you will be good to go again. It is not ruined if it gets thick. All right, so that's good. Now, I'm gonna get, let's see, yeah, this should be fine. So this is the small squeegee. And for smaller projects, I use the mini squeegee. Um, sometimes that's good when you have little um, projects. Um, sometimes they can be thinner than this, and if you have this big one, you end up making a mess. So we're gonna try this one. It should work fine. I'll just use a little bit of chalk at a time and, and try to be careful. So first, I'm going to glide the bright white chalk paste over this upper transfer that says Welcome to Our, making sure that the white has covered the entire screened area and put the excess back in the jar. So this is the same transfer that we used our banner for, just showing you another way to use it because these things are so versatile. Another project that I really wanted to do and um, show you 
um, but I didn't have all the supplies that I needed was I thought it would be super duper cute to get some little wood blocks, one for each letter, H-O-M-E, and then, um, you know, put one letter on each block. I thought that would be really cute, like sitting on a mantle or, um, you know, a shelf or something like that. I thought it'd be super cute. Okay, so there's the little script letters. Now we're going to come back and do home. So now this time I don't have to be as careful as I did with the um, banners because I'm doing the whole thing on one piece and with the banners I was trying to make sure I only got one letter per banner. So I'm just gliding over the top with just a light amount of pressure and then I'm going to come back lift up my squeegee at a 90 degree angle so that I can remove the excess and then we'll be ready to lift and reveal this portion of the design. Make sure the whole thing is covered. Now I'm going to come back lifting up my squeegee and just gliding it across. I'm not pressing down just gliding it and it's picking up all of the um, excess paste. So this is more like a screen print process. I see people often call these um, stencils, but they're really not stencils. They are transfers. So the home area that you see that we're putting the white in is not an empty space. There's actually a screen in there. Okay, here we go. Ta -da! There it is. All right, so now I'm gonna dry that off a bit and then um, go back and put some little berries on our, um, our wreath. But we wanna make sure that it's dry because we don't wanna put a transfer on top of it and then lift up the chalk paste that we just placed down. So I wanted to coordinate with my banner that I made and we put that pink um, trim on it. So I'm thinking I'll grab a pink and add just a little bit of pink to our wreath. And so these are the little berries that we're going to add on. But first, I'm going to grab my hair dryer and um, dry that wreath before we lay the transfer on top of it. Okay, here we go. Excuse the noise for a few seconds. Tell it's dry as it goes from a semi-gloss um, finish to a matte finish so you can tell that it is good to go. So now we're going to try out the little mini squeegee and the marvelous pink. So let me grab another stir stick so that we can stir this up. Well, this one's a good consistency. We don't need to add any water to it. Sorry if I was shaking the table too much. All right. So on this transfer, we're going to use it multiple times. And so what we're going to attempt to do is lay it down chalk it, lift it up, lay it down, chalk it, lift it up over and over again until we get all the way around our wreath with however many 
little berries we want. So I think I'll start here. And it's only going to take a little tiny bit to get those couple little dots. So make sure I remove the excess. And then I'm going to lift. Adds just a little bit of color. You might not be able to see it on the camera, but I'll lift it up here in a second after I get these finished up so that you can see it better. And I'm turning it different directions so that they're not all laid out exactly the same. There. Okay, so let me put this in my pan of water. It's stuck to my finger. And show you guys what we have. So let's see, can you see the pink little dots? They're very subtle, but in person you can see them easier than you can on the camera. So let me turn this around so you can get a full view of what this looks like. So here we have it. And it says, welcome to our home. How adorable is that? And you can leave that out year round. Um, it'd be really cute to put on a round uh, board or chalkboard and um, add a ribbon to it and hang it on your door for, um, you know, like a, a wreath or um, I believe they call them door hangers. Um, that would be super cute hanging on your door. Um, you can put it on chalkboards like this. You could put it on a banner like we did earlier. Um, and the, uh, the other idea I had was putting it on individual little wood blocks and have the little blocks sitting next to each other on a shelf or a mantle or something. Um, anyway, lots of cute ideas. I'm going to keep playing with this one. Um, I'm going to have to get me some of those wood blocks. I'm dying to try that. So um, if you just joined us, um, I'm going to be sharing this live video as soon as I hit end. Um, so please go back and watch it from the beginning. We did lots of fun stuff. We completed two projects and it was super duper fun. And I hope that you guys will join me again next week for another fun DIY project. And you guys have a wonderful, wonderful evening with your families. Thanks so much.